Right, rolling right along, I'm going to try and do day 23. And I say I'm going to try and do tri day 23 because this one could be tricky. This is, who would you love to have coffee with and why? I would love to have coffee with my mother. And I'll go straight, my mother passed away in 2001. But, as in all mother and daughter relationships, there were issues. Um, I loved her dearly, she loved me dearly. But I think the biggest problem is we were too much alike. She, I never did the mentor video. I didn't think I could do that one because she was my greatest mentor. She, she taught me how to get by in life, how to live a life, a, a physical life. She was the person who instilled my sense of spirituality. Um, yeah, I owe her an awful lot. But we also have the same personality flaws and nervous twitches <laughs> and, and that sort of thing. So we wound each other up big time, really fast. I mean, I always used to say, you know, we couldn't spend more than 20 minutes together before we'd be arguing about something or, you know, one of us would have offended the other one. Um, so that was always difficult. And then she had really high expectations of me. Um, or not even so much high expectations. She had very specific expectations of me. And I've got all sorts of little stories I tell about, you know, things that I was expected to do, um, which I'm, I'm not going to burden you with. But I, I was too independent. I won't say I didn't live up to her expectations, because that suggests that, you know, I didn't reach some level of accomplishment. That bugger that. I didn't accommodate her expectations. I did what I wanted to do. Um, and that was always a source of conflict between us. Um, there was always this little niggling irritation and always a, a, a sense that she wasn't so much disappointed in me, but disappointed with me that I didn't do all these things that she wanted me to do. So that was always hard. And then she became ill. And for the last nine months of her life, I had to look after her. Yeah, and I'll say I had to look after her because honestly, if there was any way on God's green earth I could have gotten out of doing that, I would have, because that was not a, a pleasant experience. Um, she was very unwell and very dependent and really not herself at all. And it was, it was just an awful experience. I mean, in a way, I'm, I'm glad I could do it. Um, and I have lots of other people to thank for that, people who looked after our cats, my husband who came and, and helped me for six months before I finally sent him home and said, look, I need you at home taking care of, of the home front so that I can focus on what's going on here and not have to worry about things. Um, but that oh, was just a horrendous experience and I didn't cope well. And I, I, I wasn't very nice at times because I wasn't sleeping. Um, I was stressed beyond belief. My mother was deteriorating in front of my eyes. Um, no, that was not a nice time. I, if things could have been different, I really wish in a way that she had gone into um, some sort of hospice situation where I could go and sit with her, you know, for you know, 18 hours a day or whatever, and, and take care of things and, and talk to her and, and do all of those things and let somebody else care for her in the sense of, you know, keep her alive, because that wasn't fun. That was not fun. So, yeah, I would really, really love... to be able to sit with her over a cup of coffee and some cake, because we're both big cake fans and just talk some things through. I have a little ancestor altar and I do I do chat to her from time to time. And I try and include her in my readings and it's getting better. It's getting better. But I miss her. And I don't. 
So, anyway, there you go. I'm going to post this. We'll see. See how awful I look. <laughs> how red my nose has gotten. I daren't look. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. Have a breather now. <laughs>